common health issues that women face today, review their common symptoms and risk factors, review their treatment options, discuss some natural preventative measures to help better deal with them. First up, migraines. Migraine headaches are one of the most common complaints in medicine. In the U.S., more than 30 million people have one or more migraine headaches a year, and approximately 75% of all persons who experience migraines are women. The economic cost resulting from migraine-related loss of production time in the U.S. workforce is more than $13 billion a year, most of which is in the form of reduced work productivity. More than 85% of women with severe migraine had some headache-related disability, requiring an average of over five and a half bed rest days per year. Typical symptoms of migraine include the following. Throbbing or pulsating headache with moderate to severe pain that intensifies with movement or physical activity. One-sided localized pain in the temple and or eye areas, but pain may be felt anywhere around the head or neck. Pain builds up over one to two hours. Headache lasts from four to 72 hours. Nausea and vomiting, including anorexia and food intolerance, and lightheadedness, and sensitivity to light and sound. Primarily a neurogenic process with secondary changes in blood flow to the brain. Risk factors for migraine include the following. Stress, increased body weight, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, impaired insulin sensitivity, stroke, and heart disease. Migraine precipitants. Various precipitants of migraine events have been identified. Hormonal changes, such as those accompanying menstruation, pregnancy, and ovulation, excessive or insufficient sleep, medications, smoking, exposure to brighter fluorescent lighting, strong odors, head trauma, weather changes, motion sickness, cold stimulus, lack of exercise, fasting or skipping meals, and red wine. Also, certain foods with food additives have been suggested as potential precipitants of migraine, including caffeine, artificial sweeteners, MSG, citrus fruits, foods containing tyramine, and meats with nitrites. Medical treatment for migraines, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. However, in many patients, migraines progress to chronic migraines from overuse of symptomatic medication which is considered the most important risk factor for migraine progression. Medication overuse headache can occur with any analgesic, including acetaminophen or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, such as ibuprofen, nanoproxen, and aspirin. The effect of anti-inflammatory medications actually induced migraine progression in patients with a high frequency of headaches. Other measures, reduction of migraine triggers, such as lack of sleep, fatigue, stress, and certain foods, non-pharmacological therapies such as biofeedback and cognitive behavior therapy, and integrated medicine such as melatonin, butterbur, riboflavin, magnesium, feverfew, and coenzyme Q10 supplementation. Next up, scoliosis. Curvature of the spine to one side when looking at it from the front or back. Scoliosis affects about 7 million people in the U.S. Most are diagnosed with scoliosis between the ages of 10 and 15, but it could also affect infants and adults. It affects people of all races and all socioeconomic classes and is found in both males and females, but girls are eight times more likely to have it. Most of the time, it does not cause pain in children or teens, so some signs to look for it are one shoulder higher than the other, one shoulder blade more noticeable, the head is not directly over the waist, one hip is more prominent than the other, the ribs appear to be at different heights, changes over skin of the spine such as dimples, hairy patches, or color changes, and leaning of the entire body to one side. Medical treatment for scoliosis. Juvenile scoliosis, aged 3 to 10, has the highest risk of getting worse, so bracing is tried early if the curve is not too severe. The goal is to prevent the child's curve from getting worse until they stop growing. Since the curve starts early, it has a lot of time left to grow. There is a higher chance of needing more aggressive treatment or surgery. However, bracing is not normally effective in these cases. It must be worn 23 hours a day, is very uncomfortable, severely limits most physical activities, and subjects the child to teasing and bullying by their peers. For adolescent scoliosis, ages 10 to bone maturity, if the curve is below 25 degrees, it is observed by routine x-rays and measurements. If the curve stays below 25 degrees, no other treatment is attempted. If the curve is between 25 and 40 degrees, a brace is recommended, which again, is not designed to correct the curve, but only used to help slow or stop the curve from getting worse. And if the curve is greater than 40 degrees, then surgery is indicated. Next, dysmenorrhea, defined as a difficult menstrual flow or painful menstruation. It is one of the most common gynecological complaints in young women, affecting more than 50% of menstruating women. Although not life-threatening, it can be debilitating and psychologically taxing for many women. It is responsible for significant absenteeism from work, and it's the most common reason for school absence among adolescents. 
resulting in a profound negative impact on a woman's day-to-day -day life. Besides missing work or school, she may be unable to participate in sports or other activities and experience additional emotional distress, and some women have severe pain that can be incapacitating. Dysmenorrhea is a public health problem associated with substantial economic loss related to work absences at an estimated 6 million work hours and $2 billion in the U.S. Typical symptoms include the following. Onset shortly after first menarch, usual duration of 2 to 3 days, often starting several hours before or just after the menstrual flow, cramping or labor-like pain, and a background of constant lower abdominal pain radiating to the back or thigh. Besides dysmenorrhea, patients with premenstrual dysphoric disorder, formerly premenstrual syndrome, may have bloating, body aches, migraine headaches, breast tenderness, and emotional complaints. The risk factors for more severe episodes of dysmenorrhea are early age at menarche, long menstrual periods, heavy menstrual flow, smoking, positive family history, obesity, and alcohol consumption. Medical treatment for dysmenorrhea. Treatment of dysmenorrhea is aimed at providing symptomatic relief only and typically includes non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and oral contraceptives. Preventative measures. Lifestyle modification, smoking cessation, and exercise. Other measures. Omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin E, vitamin B1, magnesium, calcium, melatonin, cramp bark, fennel, heat, aromatherapy, massage, acupressure, and chiropractic. Next up, irritable bowel syndrome, a digestive disorder that affects 15% of the U.S. population and affects women two to three times more than men. The symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome are chronic stomach pain, major disturbance of bowel functioning, episodes of urgent diarrhea, chronic constipation, and a pattern alternating between the two. IBS is considered a functional disorder in that it involves a malfunction in how your intestinal system works. It causes significant disruption in the ability to do normal acts of daily living, and people with IBS frequently feel as if they have lost control of their life and they just want to feel normal again. It results in an increased risk of miscarriage and ectopic pregnancy. Of women diagnosed with IBS before pregnancy, 7% had a spontaneous miscarriage, 0.74% had an ectopic pregnancy, and 0.43% developed preeclampsia, and 22% had a stillbirth. And maternal IBS was associated with moderately increased risk of miscarriage and ectopic pregnancy. Stress and IBS often go hand in hand, but the relationship is not yet fully understood, but new research indicates that more than likely there is a functional problem between the gut and the brain. Medical treatment for IBS. Treatment is aimed at providing symptomatic relief only and typically includes anticholinergics, antidiarrheals, tricyclic antidepressants, prokinetics, bulk forming laxatives, serotonin receptor antagonists, chloride channel activators, GCC agonists, and antispasmodics. Dietary measures include the following, fiber supplementation, judicious water intake, caffeine avoidance, legume avoidance, lactose and or fructose limitation or avoidance. Other measures, psychological interventions, cognitive behavior therapy, dynamic psychotherapy, hypnotherapy, and relaxation therapy. Next up, menopause. Hormonal changes and clinical symptoms occur over a period leading up to and immediately following menopause. During the transition, physiological changes and responsiveness to pituitary hormones and their secretions occur, with wide variations in hormone levels. Women often experience a range of symptoms, including the following, hot flashes or flushes, insomnia, weight gain and bloating, mood changes, irregular menses, breast tenderness, depression, and headaches. Factors that can lower the age of physiological menopause include the following. Smoking, hysterectomy, fragile X carrier, autoimmune disorders, living at high altitude, and a history of receiving certain chemotherapy medications or undergoing radiation therapy. Medical treatment for menopause, hormone or estrogen therapy. However, in the Women's Health Initiative, while I found a greater safety and possible benefit from hormone or estrogen therapy for women in their 50s, it also showed a potential harm for older women with respect to the following. Coronary artery disease, total myocardial infarction, colorectal cancer, total mortality, and global index of chronic diseases.
Although immediate use of hormone or estrogen therapy in early postmenopausal time may reduce the risk of coronary artery disease, the Women's Health Initiative clearly showed that women more than nine years postmenopause should not be started on hormone therapy or estrogen therapy for coronary artery disease prevention. Adverse effects of replacement therapy include bloating, painful breasts, vaginal bleeding, headaches, an increased risk of pancreatitis, and an increased risk of blood clots. Dietary measures. Essential fatty acids are vital for effective hormone production. B vitamins, particularly B3 and B5, are a great help in relieving depression and mood swings. And boron, because it helps your body preserve the estrogen it still has. Herbs that many women have found helpful during their menopausal years include cheese tree berries, which are helpful hormone balancers, black cohosh and wild yam, which enhance estrogen levels, regular teas of chamomile, lemon balm, and rosemary that help with periods of irritability and sadness. Avoid certain foods. Women who eat more sugar experience more hormonal problems than those who moderate their sugar intake, both in premenopause and during menopause itself. Caffeine and alcohol may also trigger hot flashes and affect hormone production, leading to more frequent and greater mood swings. Other measures. Exercise keeps the body healthy, and regular walking and other aerobic activity is helpful during menopause and gentle yoga can assist with joint pain and promote flexibility. Next up, osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is defined as bone mineral density equal to or greater than two and a half standard deviations below the peak bone mass or T-score. Bone loss accelerates in the late menopausal transition and continues for the first few years after menopause. The overall effect of menopausal bone loss is a reduction of bone strength, leading to an increased risk of fracture. The younger the woman is when ovarian function ceases, the more severe bone loss is likely to be. Similarly, the lower the woman's bone mass is when she enters menopause, the more severe the osteoporosis will be. Medical treatment for preventing fractures include the following. Biphosphonates, selective estrogen receptor modulators, calcitonin, monoclonal antibodies, hormonal medications, estrogen therapy, and hormonal replacement therapy. The main adverse effects of biphosphonates continue to be gastrointestinal upset and reflux, and patients with significant GERD should be discouraged from biphosphonate use. And in May 2010, the Journal of the American Medical Association reported a possible association between biphosphonates and atypical femoral fractures. And in October 2013, the Chess Journal of the American College of Chess Physicians reported that the use of biphosphonates was linked with a serious risk of atrial fibrillation and stroke. In just this March 2014, the American Journal of Cardiology published a study that showed that the use of biphosphonates was linked with a greater risk of atrial fibrillation requiring hospitalization. Dietary measures. Supplementation with calcium remains a mainstay of prevention, as does vitamin D supplementation and regular weight-bearing exercise. However, excessive salt, animal protein, alcohol, and caffeine offset these benefits. Last up, osteoarthritis or degenerative joint disease. Osteoarthritis is the most common type of joint disease, affecting more than 20 million individuals in the U.S. In individuals older than 55 years, the prevalence of osteoarthritis is higher among women than among men. Women are especially susceptible to osteoarthritis in the joints of the fingers. Women also have osteoarthritis in the knee joints more frequently than men do, with a female-to-male incidence ratio of 1.7 to 1 and women are also more prone to erosive arthritis with a female to male ratio of about 12 to 1. A degenerative disorder arising from the breakdown of cartilage in the joints predominantly involves the weight-bearing joints including the knees, hips, neck, lower back, and feet, and other commonly affected joints include the shoulders, wrists, and hands. Costs associated with osteoarthritis can be particularly significant for elderly persons who face potential loss of independence and who may need help with daily living activities. Symptoms include the following, deep achy joint pain exacerbated by extensive use, reduced range of motion and crepitus, and stiffness during rest, with morning joint stiffness usually lasting less than half an hour. Risk factors for osteoarthritis include the following, age, obesity, trauma, genetics, reduced levels of sex hormones, muscle weakness, repetitive use, infection, crystal depositition, previous inflammatory arthritis, diabetes, disorders of the bone, and previous surgical procedure of the joint. Medical treatment. No proven disease or structure-modifying drugs for osteoarthritis are known, so pharmacological treatment is directed at symptom relief only and includes tropical non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, oral NSAIDs, Tylenol, Tramadol, steroid injections, and surgery.
However, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality Findings found Tylenol was modestly inferior to NSAIDs in reducing osteoarthritic pain, but was associated with a lower risk of GI adverse effects. On the other hand, acetaminophen poses a higher risk of liver injury. NSAIDs were associated with a risk of ulcer-related complications and symptomatic ulcers. The risk of serious GI adverse effects was found to be higher with nanoproxen than with ibuprofen, but ibuprofen was associated with an increased risk of heart attack, and all NSAIDs had deleterious effects on blood pressure, edema, and kidney function. An evidence regarding frequent steroid injections leads to subsequent damage to cartilage. Accordingly, it is recommended that no more than three injections per year be delivered to any individual osteoarthritic joint. Other measures, heat and cold, weight loss, and exercise. The primary cause of nerve irritation in the body is a spinal imbalance called subluxation. Spinal distortions cause nervous imbalance, decreased blood flow, and increased tissue breakdown, which leads to irritation of delicate muscles and nervous system tissue. If you interfere with the nerves that supply these tissues, would it cause them to function better or worse? A 2004 study found that the function of nerves is improved when mechanical stress is lifted through chiropractic adjustments. This results in better communication between the brain and body. Can you see a common theme? The nervous system is the master system of the body. It controls and regulates all functions of the body, including circulation, hormone production, muscle contraction and relaxation, and adaptability to stress. What system houses and protects the nervous system? The spinal column and skull. The primary cause of interference to the sensitive nerves are subluxations in the spinal vertebra. The causes of subluxation, physical, posture, past history of trauma, birth trauma, sleeping position, ergonomic stress, etc. Chemical and emotional. How to assess nervous system and spinal balance. A chiropractic examination, including range of motion testing and orthopedic and neurological testing. And of course, x-rays, since that's the only way to find out what's really going on. So, to review, we discuss some of the common health issues that women face today. We review their common symptoms and risk factors. We review their treatment options. And we discuss some natural preventative measures to help better deal with them. Thank you for watching.